Shabbat Shalom and happy Hanukkah. I hope that this video finds you and your family safe and healthy. The Parsha that we read this Shabbos, the Parsha of Vayeshev, marks a nodal point in the biblical history of our people. With the sale of Joseph by his brothers to passing slave traders, the stage is set for the Israelites' descent into Egyptian slavery. It will be this 400-year sojourn in Egypt, the exodus, the receiving of the Torah on Mount Sinai, and finally the return to the land promised to our ancestors that will serve as the foundation to the Jewish experience. The theme of slavery and redemption is foreshadowed in our Parsha with Joseph's brief incarceration resulting from unwanted advances from Potiphar's wife and then followed by his elevation to the position of visor over all of Egypt. Once again, we see echoes of the slavery redemption cycle and the story of Joseph confronting his brothers. When they come before him not knowing his identity, he puts them in prison, accusing them of being spies and possibly fermenting rebellion. It is with these accusations that a new pharaoh, years later, would accuse the Israelite minority living among the Egyptians, building a case among his advisors and his people for the enslavement of the Jewish nation. Patterns of persecution and restoration reverberate throughout our history from the biblical period forward. We celebrate our heroes from Moses to Ezra and Nehemiah to Judah the Maccabee to Bar Kochva to Esther to Mordechai and Alevich and to our modern era founders and defenders of the state of Israel. But there have been others who have worked to bring redemption of the Jewish people in less obvious ways, even sometimes in secret and at great risk. One of the most powerful Hanukkah experiences that I ever had was in 1983 when I visited the Soviet dissident and refusenik Lev Shapiro in his apartment. Lev and his family lived in St. Petersburg. At the time it was called Leningrad. After indicating his desire to emigrate and live in Israel, Lev and his wife lost their jobs and they were subject to regular harassment from the KGB who would frequently follow them whenever they left their apartment. Although during our visits, Lev downplayed the risks involved in teaching Hebrew, studying Talmud with a group that met regularly at his apartment and observing Jewish rituals in his home, the truth was that he was in constant danger. I'll never forget the lighting of the Hanukkah menorah, hearing the blessings recited in a heavy Russian accent and singing Al Hanisim together with Lev's family. During those years in the Soviet Union, even celebrating Hanukkah, was a subversive act. Winter in Leningrad was cold and harsh, with nighttime coming early. But with the lighting of the menorah burning brightly, I witnessed firsthand a true moment of redemption. The small wax candles barely lit up the room, but I'm quite sure that in that moment it felt like the whole world was illuminated. Wishing everyone a Shabbat Shalom and a happy Hanukkah.